kids. Today we're cleaning out the attic, answering all your requests, and solving all your problems with just about every game out there. There's a lot to do today, so stay put. <laughs> I'm Kristen Holt, and today we're revealing tips and tricks for some huge games like Resident Evil 4 on the PS2, Half-Life 2 on the Xbox, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, and a ton of others. In fact, we've got so many cheats, we better get right to it. The first game we'll look at is Path of Neo, which recaps all three Matrix movies. Here we'll be unveiling some amazing Easter eggs and kung fu fighting techniques, so get your shades and your cell phones, we're jacking into the Matrix now. Mr. Anders. In Path of Neo for the PS2, you get to step into Neo's boots and find out what it's like to be the one. Of course, even the one needs a little help sometimes. We've fallen deep into the rabbit hole and compiled a collection of Easter eggs and unlockables that'll help you get the most out of the Matrix. First of all, pay attention to your surroundings during the training missions. You do still claim to be the ultimate gamer, right? There are six levels, and they have been influenced by a different movie. Take, for example, this hideout room and these kung fu soldiers who've been nicked from Enter the Dragon. These Hong Kong gunrunners in the Tea House shootout are modeled after John Woo's Hard Boiled. This walkway is straight out from the Animatrix. Pretty cool, huh? Next, if you're playing on either easy or normal difficulty, you can unlock the staff combo movie during the kung fu training session. In this tool shop, you'll see three guys working. Keep quiet and go for the three silent takedowns in a row. Excellent. Done correctly, you'll uncover a briefcase containing the staff combo movie. To view the flick, go to the game menu, then extras, and select making of. After that, head for the sword training level. You may notice that the swordsman looks like a character from the Japanese anime film, Ninja Scrolls. But if you're not interested in that, then just go and smash the pot behind the waterfall. This will unlock a video called the Sword Combo Movie, which you'll also find in the extras menu under Making Up. Next, during the machine gun level, try to shoot down the helicopter that's chasing you. Bringing down the chopper will open the art graveyard so you can check out all the nifty drawings that were tossed aside. Now let's check out Seraph's Apology in the fourth stage. At the tea house, you can unlock the beginning of End Combo. To do so, you'll need to destroy the eight tables and all the posts in the room. And moving on to the burly brawl, look what happens when you defeat 30 Agent Smiths. You'll find a briefcase in the middle of the courtyard. This will unlock the one combo instructions. Of course, if you've got the brain power to memorize this combo, you really might be the one. Okay, I hope that helps you in your quest. But to give you even more incentive to reach the end of the game, look out for a special message from the Wachowski siblings. Next up, we'll go from fighting machines to fighting zombies. Resident Evil 4 is packed chock full of undead opposition. And it's up to you to make the body count rise. We'll look at some elements of the game that are new to the PS2 and show you how to keep from joining the ranks of the undead. Okay, PS2 fanboys and girls, time to put on your party hats. Resident Evil 4 finally lumbers its way onto your favorite system. And not only that, but the evil geniuses at Capcom have thrown in a few extras just for you. Jeez, who are these guys? As you probably already know, we here at Cheat are huge fans of unlockables. Some serious Resident Evil lovers have even said we're the masters of unlocking. If you're one of the eight people who got that joke, you're welcome. Anyway, here's how to break open the toy box in RE4. <laughs> to zap zombies with the Star Trek phaser thingy, you first have to finish the game twice. Once in the wimpy normal mode, and then again on the ball-busting hard mode. Oh, no. I know this sounds like a lot of work, but once you're phase-blasting multiple enemies at once, you'll thank me. 
In the GameCube version of RE4, Cubis could unlock the Chicago typewriter by completing Assignment Ada. In the PS2 version, you'll need to complete the new Separate Ways side missions to say hello to Leon's little friend, a Thompson submachine gun. The only problem? It costs a million pesetas. Luckily, you can knock a few hundred thou off the sticker price by completing Assignment Ada. The only drawback? You can only use the gun during Separate Ways chapters. Put them up now. And if you needed yet another reason to get off your ass and save Ada, here's one more. New duds. Finish the Separate Ways chapters and both Leon and Ashley will get extreme makeovers. Bit of advice, try using knives next time. Works better for close encounters. Leon will look his best in these high-class Italian threads, even when he's splattered in gore. And Ashley will get a knight's costume, which not only makes her harder to hurt, but also makes it more strenuous for those parasitic scum to carry her off. No! So that's the inside scoop on Resident Evil 4 for the PS2. Now get out there and start cheating. There's still more RE4 tips ahead, and we'll even tackle Half-Life 2 for the Xbox with some cheat codes straight from Valve. Now let's take a quick break and absorb some important product information. cheat and our guide to the games within the games that matter most to you. If you needed a reason to finish Resident Evil 4, other than making the world safe from zombies that is, it would have to be all the awesome unlockables and other special treats you get at the end. What? You don't know what those are? Well check this out. One of the newest additions to RE4 is the collection of separate ways side missions. These storylines, during which you play as Ada Wong, run parallel to Leon's and illuminate certain aspects of the main narrative. Here are some tips that'll help you survive to learn the whole story. Think of all the paperwork I would have to fill out if you were to show up alive. The start of the third chapter is particularly dicey. You'll find yourself pursued by bloodthirsty red cultists as you attempt to navigate a deadly hedge maze. God, why the hell do they even make hedge mazes? Nothing good ever happens in a hedge maze. The secret to surviving is to blaze the maze. Equip all the incendiaries you can and toast anything that moves. Once your grenades start running low, head over to the bridge and start sniping. Pick off baddies until you see the cavalry arrive through this gate. That's your signal to beat it. Soon, you'll find yourself in the dining room. Kill off the advancing monks and hunker down in preparation for an ambush. Equip a hand grenade and wait for a Garador to show his ugly mug. Once he does, scatter his troop with a grenade and break the lock on the door. Now, you don't have to fight these guys. Whatever you decide, you do have to insert the hourglass into this chest. Now let's skip to chapter five. I hope you've acquired the bow gun by this point because you're gonna need it to take out troublesome Gatling gunners. Just make sure you fire from a distance or you'll blow yourself up in the process. You should also be ready to face serious opposition from the central tower. Enemy after enemy will drop down and try to drop you. To stay on your toes, just equip your favorite crowd control weapon and blast away. Hold your ground long enough and eventually the locked doors will pop open. Once you reach the final battle, you'll find yourself facing off against Sadler again. We discovered that like many bad guy bosses, Sadler dislikes being shot in the face with the TMP. Therefore, we alighted on the tactic of shooting him in the face with the TMP. You can maximize damage to him and minimize damage to you by standing a little ways off and firing two or three arrows from your bow gun directly at his dome. When you see an extra eye appear in his mouth, run over and poke it out. You'll find he goes down in no time. 
Okay, cheaters, now we're gonna jump platforms and follow Half-Life 2 as it leaps from the PC to the Xbox. Hang on tight and watch out for the barnacles. Oof. Gordon Freeman and the Resistance from Half-Life 2 have finally fought their way onto the Xbox, and now they're having a blast with its peppy source engine. To celebrate their arrival, here's a troika of cheat codes just for you. The world of Half-Life 2 is a rough one, and you're bound to get some bumps and bruises. This code will magically regenerate 25 hit points. Those of you in the know will probably recognize this immediately as the storied Konami code. During gameplay, use the D-pad to enter up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. And now that you're all patched up, let's get back to the blasting. To eke out a little ammo from a dry environment, enter YBAX, white, YXAB, white. Now, this code only resupplies your active weapon, so it's not the kind of overpowering cheat we adore around here, but it will let you blow off a few extra heads. And last but not least, one of our favorite codes, unlock all chapters. Inputting this code will let you romp around all the game's 15 chapters willy-nilly. Again, during gameplay, enter left four times, black, right four times, and white. So that's our special welcome to the Xbox selection of codes for Half-Life 2. If you haven't been paying attention, and why haven't you? You can see a recap of all the codes I just broke down for you on our website at g4tv.com slash cheat. Got one. Well, that was illuminating. Up next, we'll broaden your horizons further as we visit foreign lands. We'll be traveling south of the border and far to the east. So go get your passport and come right back. I'm Kristen Holt. In this segment, we'll be checking out Total Overdose, a game in which you play as a Mexican bandito. We think the game's pretty realistic, but then none of us have ever worked as a bandito, so let's see what you think. Total Overdose, a gunslinger's tale in Mexico, is one part revenge story and, well, just a whole lot of parts action. Here are the three essential cheats you'll need to survive. Numero uno, loco moves. These one-off moves give you the ability to dish out damage matrix style, piñata boom boom, and treat your enemies to piñatas, exploding piñatas. Before entering the cheat codes, you'll need to enter the button combinations you see on screen, followed immediately by this combo, circle, circle, L2, R2. There. Now say hello to my little amigo. Sombrero. Numero dos. Unlock all weapons. This little gem of a code opens up a mega mart containing almost anything that goes boom. Comparison shot between a shotgun and a bazooka. Just remember to put everything back when you're done playing with it. To get the cheating started, enter the pre-code again. And then enter triangle, L1, R2, and square. Now, Ramiro is strapped with more guns than he's got pockets. And finally, numero tres, maximum health. Since there isn't a god mode in this game, you'll need to watch your health meter. Whenever it dips below your comfort level, enter this cheat to restore it. Again, enter the pre-code, and then enter the cheat code. X square, circle, and triangle. Piñata boom boom! For a recap, go to g4tv.com slash cheat. Adios, amigos. Well, that was fabuloso. Pinata boom boom. Okay, I suck at sound effects, but I hope you liked it anyway. Now let's step into the octagon with insider info as Domino's delivers you walkthroughs on Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. Ever since Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks hit consoles, Shao Kahn has been kicking ass and taking names. Two of these names are Conquer HH and Plotchman, both of whom sent in help requests. Okay, my faithful cheaters, here's how to kick Khan's can. 
First, enter the fortress. You'll find Kano and Katana locked up in lockdown. Give Katana a pep talk until some guards arrive. Then, beat the crap out of them. Why do people even take jobs as guards? Not so fast, Grunt. She's my prize and you're going nowhere with it. If you choose to pound the hell out of Kano, you'll score some extra XP and a health orb. We suggest you save the orb for the upcoming battle. You insult me, Flea. I am Shao Kahn. I will be your death. Follow me if you want to die at my hands. Right, right, die at your hands. I've heard that before. If you're a veteran mortal combatant, the bosses you're about to face shouldn't surprise you. You destroyed your soul tombs. You should not be this strong. Is that what your master Raiden told you to do? <laughs> it's no secret that Shang Tsung is a shapeshifter, so you'll be battling various baddies from the MK universe. But despite his flashy costume changes, Tsung's actually kind of a punk. <laughs> We employed a bold strategy of hitting him while avoiding his attacks. It sounds crazy, I know, but it works. The next opponent's a bit tougher. Kintaro, likely one of Goro's distant cousins, has the potential to dish out some serious damage. You have to save as much health as possible. So first, dodge his fireballs, then return the favor. When he jumps off screen in preparation for an aerial assault, we suggest you move away. After that, slug him until he loses his head. Fatality. Okay, now for the serious stuff. Although Shao Kahn is a daunting foe, the first stage of the battle is pretty simple. Just dodge his attacks and return fire when the coast is clear. It's not until Khan breaks out the mace that things start to get ugly. He'll come at you with a shoulder charge combined with a spinning mace attack. Our suggestion? Run! If you do get hit, though, use that health orb we unlocked for you earlier. Once Xiao pounds the ground, you can sneak in ranged attacks. And, in an ironic twist, if you throw Kintaro's head at him, you'll score extra damage. Continue to run and gun, and soon enough, Khan's reign of terror will be over. Thanks, Dominoes. Delicious as always, and Noid free. Okay, after the break, I'll break you off some strategies on the underappreciated GameCube with our look at the underground sensation, Fire Emblem. Stick around. We've seen Resident Evil 4 and Path of Neo, but up next, we're throwing some love the GameCube's way. Here's how to avoid getting burned in Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Enjoy! Well, Ike, you had enough? Fire Emblem, a longtime favorite on the GBA, makes its debut on the GameCube with Path of Radiance. While the action in this game is handicapped by a halting turn-based combat system, it gets a welcome dose of spice from the finality of gameplay. When one of your men eats it in this game, it's game over. No revive spells or potions can bring him back. This adds an element of excitement that counteracts the staccato turn-by-turn -turn system. Don't leave. Don't leave me! Keeping in mind that character death is the end of line in Fire Emblem, here's how to take down King Ashnard with minimal casualties. First off, before entering the battleground, make sure at least one of your mates has equipped Restore and Asherah's staff. This will allow them to fix up wounded party members before they bite the dust permanently. It will also come in handy when you face this one super annoying bishop who can put your men to sleep during battle. 
Next, position flying mounted fighters on the flanks. They can travel further than ground troops and will let you strike first. Then, move Ike to the center of the arena to battle King Bryce. If you've leveled up Ike properly, he should be very powerful by now, and using the Ragnall Sword, he'll mop up the floor with your enemies. After he beats Bryce down, he'll draw attention from the remaining soldiers. This is fine. He'll be able to slice through them like a hot sword through butter. As for your other allies, instruct them to target the larger and stronger enemies first. This way, they'll have a reduced chance of damaging your other comrades. When you come up against dragons and beast soldiers, use Lagoo's weapons for the most brutal effect. Once you make your way to the battleground's second tier, look for these soldiers wielding a killing edge and a killer axe. These guys are plenty powerful, and they'll do major damage unless you take them out first. Also, remember to heal your party members along the way. Most of the remaining enemies are pretty weak at this point. Remember the bishop we told you about before? Well, he'll try to put you to sleep. But as long as you equip Restore or a share of staff, he'll be no trouble at all. As with most bosses who hide behind a mass of minions, once you take out Ashnard's bodyguards, the big guy himself ain't so tough. For the final attack, position your men outside Ashnard's range. Ike's the only character who can do any real damage on His Royal Highness, so keep your men at bay. Position Ike right in front of King Ashnard so he can perform his special attacks. Treat Ike's injuries with some healing and keep hammering away at the unholy king. Follow our strategy guide to the letter and you'll soon be rewarded with this. Man, doesn't anyone die quietly in this game? Thank you, my lord Ike. I am... I am so blessed to have met you. And that's all she wrote. I've got to get the cheat team back to their special holding cells. If you'd like them to rip apart your favorite game, hit us off with an email at cheat at g4tv.com or leave a message on the boards at g4tv.com slash cheat. So until the next time, I'm Kristen Holt, and I'm a cheater.